Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. So, today's topic is city cinema, particularly in the Indian cinema context. And I will be focusing on uh, majorly on Hindi films, but also uh, select films from other languages also. We are, uh, but my particular and specific interest in post liberalization city cinema from India. Now, um, as we know, Every major world city has a distinct culture and different directors have captured a unique aspect of that culture in their films. Now, city culture is embodied in uh, a city's language, its social beliefs, its uh, the kind of people who walk the streets, the flanners, its food, its clothes, the mass media, popular culture, youth culture of a particular city. So, these are the uh, these are the uh, uh, factors that constitute a city. What is a city after all, if not its language, its culture, its food, its people? City cinema captures the iconography, the iconology of these films and uh, uh, it represents what the city is through an interplay of oral visual signs and thus translates urban landscapes into cultural space, spaces. Now, for example, in Woody Allen's Manhattan, the city is presented as a romanticized, glimmering, cosmopolitan world. If Woody Allen's New York is peopled with those interested in Bob Dylan, Tennessee Williams and Guggenheim Museum, the uh, cinema or New York of Martin Scorsese thrives and often representing its uh, underbelly, the mean streets. Okay, so, we have to understand how different filmmakers capture different facets, different faces of a city. In cinema of the metropolis in India, shades of city culture is reflected through, you know, through extreme Dharavi in uh, Mumbai to Anasala area of Chennai and from Lodi Gardens of Delhi uh, to College Street of Kolkata, where cinema portrays the turbulence and energy, the attitude of people, their desires and possibilities interpersonal relationships and facets of urban angst. Now, I uh, think uh, a film like uh, Raj Kapoor's Sri Chasabis, I know I am supposed to talk to you about post liberalization cinema, but here is a connect. Okay, there is going to be some kind of a relationship between Sri Chasabis, which starts with uh, uh, a road sign that is Bombay 420. You know, it is a very literally, uh, with literal telling of what city is, you know, 420 is a very Indian slang, uh, which means uh, someone who is, a, 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 you know, a, a kind of a manipulator, a kind of a, a cheat. Yeah, so, Bombay 420, everyone uh, who inhabits the city space has got to be a city person is, uh, uh, colloquially speaking, a 420 person, okay, a fraud in other words. So, as uh, Raju played by Raj Kapoor, he heads towards his city of dreams, he sees this road sign Bombay 420. And uh, now, a well meaning character later on advises Raju that this is Bombay and truth comes dime a dozen, but there are 420 ways of making money by deceit. Now, from this point, I would flash forward to the 90s post liberalization, post liberalized period, when uh, you get to see a movie like Raju Bangya Gentleman starring Shah Rukh Khan, where a street performer played by Nana Partikar wants another Raju. Now, Raj, uh, Shah Rukh is also Raju in this film. And what, what does uh, he tell him? That wait till you learn what Bombay really is as you know, you do not know what Bombay is. Uh, the idea is that again for a naive, well meaning, well, you know, wide eyed, innocent like yourself, 
Bombay is no place. You have, you don't really know what Bombay is. In order to make it big in Bombay, in other words, you have to be corrupt, a fraud. Now, uh, what is being discussed here is the essence or the spirit of Mumbai. Now, at one place, it is also a place, it can be seen as a place that welcomes fast and discards faster. Now, um, I would like to draw your attention to uh, F. W. Murnau's Sunrise, which also played on these binaries about the city and the rural, where everything good is uh, represented, city represents um, everything that is evil and the small town or the rural represents everything that is good. So, the binaries. Okay. So, there is a farm fatal in Marno sunrise and there is a good sacrificing wife um, in the rural space. So, this is what we have been generally told. Things are although changing now. So, um, it has been, uh, it is uh, known that the real sites of Bombay are the streets themselves. We generally talk about uh, the great streets of Bombay. So, there is a film called Life in uh, Metro, 2007 uh, Anurag Basu movie, which is a contemporary take on Mumbai and portrays the sounds and silence of, silences of Mumbai along with the uh, much talked about uh, multicultural ethos and plurality of the city. Now, amidst attempts at suicide and disappointments and tears and heartbreaks and anguish and uh, corporate life, the tussle between corporate life and family life, life in a metro is probably a film that includes almost every element of Mumbai. And although it touches upon the negative aspects of modern life in a city, it also ends on a hopeful note and with a token of promise, a tone of promise is always there. Now, Mumbai is a summation that is bigger than its people, but the film tries to tell us that greatness stems from its people. Popular genre of cinema of Mumbai usually traces the life of an outsider, an innocent whose quest for livelihood or truth uh, often would often end in a tragedy as in Diwar, as in Nayakan or Parinda and Hatyar. Also, Agnipat and uh, uh, Ramgopal Verma's uh, trilogy of organized crime, Satya, Company and Sarkar. Now, parallel cinema of Mumbai on the other hand is stamped with the mark of realism as well as on the world of the urban poor and the lower middle class. Their squalid lies and fantasies as seen in Miranai's Salam Bombay or more recently in uh, Danny Ball's Slumdog Millionaire. So, these films are conspicuous for depiction of the stark contrast between the everyday lives of the protagonists and their dreams of a better life. So, what I am trying to say is that right from the cinema of maestros such as Bimal Roy and Gurudat to Raj Kapoor and Satyajit Ray, streets have been, city has been a uh, significant space of random encounters, violent crimes, urban surveillance and ambiguous morality and sexuality. I would urge you to watch Satyajit Ray's Mahanagar in this connection. And um, city cinema often represents the emerging social space and public sphere of modern urbanism. A city and its language are joined at the seams. Street and dialect of Bombay, or Mumbai, popularly known as the Bombaya language, perhaps is the best known of cinematic language from India. This dialect was first heard and appreciated for its authenticity in Gurudas Arpa. The variety of uh, the variety and uh, composite of Konkani and Marathi and Hindi and English soon became a staple of several films with Mumbai as a backdrop. Gangster films such as Agnipat and Satya and Company, uh, also Sarkar, shoot out at Lokhandwala, they have made use of this peculiar brand of language. Now, at this point, I would like to draw your attention to a clipping from Munna Bhai MBBS. Please watch this particular scene and then we will talk about, you will you'll understand what I am trying to tell you.
So, um, I am sure you enjoyed that particular scene. Now, um, as you know, the Mumbai dialect in recent times has never been as well captured as in Mumbai Munabhai series. Uh, so, expressions such as Vat Laggai Mamu and uh, ja, uh, you know Jadu Ki Jhappi etc. they went on to become part of our national vocabulary, our collective lexicon. The sequel to Munna Bhai MBBS that is Lage Raho Munna Bhai which was released in 2008 popularized terms such as Gandhi Giri and Dimag Me Chemical Locha. Uh, so, the, what I am trying to tell you is that the Mumbai Tapori or street slang used in the film has become a sort of style statement. It is amazing that a word Mamu which is a typical Mumbai slang has become popular. Uh, you know in the remost, remotest corner of India. Now, from Bombay we move on to Delhi. Delhi is another metropolitan city with a peculiar blend of languages. The Urdu language, uh, uh, the Urduized uh, or Urdu laden language is prominent in, a, in Amir Khan's Fana, where the terrorist protagonist masquerades as a poet and a tourist guide before he strikes. There is a, this is a stark contrast with the language of uh, Dibakar Banerjee's Oye Lucky Lucky Oye, which is also set in uh, Delhi, where the characters are seeped in their local milieu of Charles in Delhi and speak of the dialect peculiar to that domain, complete with slang and jargons. In both Muna Bhai and Oye Lucky Lucky Oye, the milieu is an integral feature and shapes the behavior and attitude of the people. I would like you to watch this particular sequence from Oye Lucky Lucky Oye in order to appreciate a peculiar dialect of Delhi. I am sure you enjoyed the scene. Now, uh, uh, from streets, let us talk about uh, landmarks of the city. And as you know, India Gate of Delhi is another potent symbol of nationalism and patriotism. It was designed by the British architect uh, Latins to commemorate the names of those who died in the First World War. Now, you know, flash forward to a film like Rang de Basanti, when a group of carefree young people who are in the process of enacting roles of freedom fighters in a documentary salute to India Gate. There is a particular sequence. We realize that as these people delve deeper into their characters, the real life gradually takes over the real life and soon the actors start identifying with the patriots. India Gate becomes now a spectator and a character in itself and a group of peaceful protesters march towards the war memorial and are brutally beaten by the police. This scene demonstrates how past merges into the present and how temporal boundaries are eroded as state atrocities on innocent citizens are carried out by succession of repressive measures. So, strong was the impact of uh, Rang de Basanti on the psyche of uh, Indian masses that post its release youth activism took to streets to protest on public interest issues uh, and there were a number of cases where young people got together and started uh, pro protesting uh, in front of India Gate. Again, uh, from uh, Bombay and Delhi, let us move on to Hyderabad and Hyderabad Blues, Nagesh Kukunu's film is a prime example of how city is represented in, it, in all its glory. So, uh, this is one film where the notion of city as a mindscape has been effectively reinforced. The protagonist of Hyderabad Blues, uh, which was released in 1998, is Varun, played by Nagesh Kukunur, and the plot uh, revolves around his visit home after 12 years in the USA. It is partly autobiographical, and here uh, Nagesh Kukunur establishes the theme with the emblematic shot at the outset, where the narrative protagonist, full of idyllic thoughts of his hometown, is rudely shaken out of his reveries on a typical crowded Indian road and we are sutured into the narrative as they identify with Varun's gaze, surprise, absolutely astonished gaze 
falling upon a herd of buffaloes blocking the traffic. So, welcome to Hyderabad. Yeah. The vitality of Hyderabad blues is marked by the codes it uses. A code as you know is explained as a sh uh, sort of system or a structure used to decode a work of art. It is uh, defined as any system of uh, assumptions, beliefs, ideology or stereotypes that is relied on or alluded to in a film or other works of art and uh, th all this can be called a code. For example, we have the code of the English language, the cultural codes regulating the behavior of the protagonist, the codes of music, the codes of narrativity and so on. Since codes and conventions change according to the ideological climate of the time, it is significant to note the linguistic code switching in the film clearly reflecting the changing temper of the late 90s. So, uh, it is against this backdrop that you should be watching Hyderabad blues. Now, um, gangster cinema and most gangster films are set in Bombay. So, they are a very important subgenre of crime films and are of particular interest in the context of the urban because gangster films present us with an alternative topography, an alternative community and an alternative urban consciousness. Um, so, um, uh, there are several films that represent this most importantly and most significantly in recent times. Again, I would like you to watch uh, films such as Satya and uh, Company and also shoot out at Lokhandwala. Now, uh, we also have a film like Madhur Bhandarkar's Traffic Signal, it is a 2006 movie where the traffic signal becomes as emblematic of their lives as the invisible green and red lights that maneuvers that maneuver uh, uh, mankind from anguish to atonement in the cycle of life, which we call existence. Bhandarkar's microcosmic view of the street people is cluttered with characters who switch by creating their own little spaces in the bustle of the street hustle. A flourishing industry exists at the signals and that is what Madhu Bhandarkar tells us and those who engineer and run the empire include gangsters and politicians. The plot is stationed at a traffic signal, the characters are shabby to look at, they wear tattered clothes and the lingo they speak is outright pedestrian, coarse and uncouth. The director presents an array of street characters such as the orphan little boy Tsunami, the prostitute Nuri, the junkie street hustler and illustrates the strangely ironical relationship that grows between passengers in Poshka posh cars and these fringe people at street signals who eke out a living by lying to their destiny. From here we move on to uh, uh, you know down south that is and uh, particularly to Chennai. Almost perfect example of uh, city cinema is Rajiv Menon's Kandukondan Kandukondan which tells the story of modern migrants to post liberalized Chennai and how it represents the interaction and movement between rural and urban sensibilities. The film is the story of two sisters loosely based on Jane Austen's sense and sensibility. One sister is serious uh, and pragmatic, the other romantic and idealistic. They are forced to leave their ancestral home in uh, their rural small town and then they move on, they move to Chennai and struggle to get by on almost nothing. So, filmmakers have always shown the two evergreen landmarks of Chennai, the Chennai Central Station and, uh, and the LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India building to introduce the city and to show the that the story has moved from the village um, or any other city to the bustling metropolis of Chennai or the erstwhile Madras. The scene reinforces these two edifices further in the psyche of most people uh, who are new to the city. So, um, Kandukondan Kandukondan presents a mosaic of images of the so called Singara Chennai or beautiful Chennai from music schools of Mylapur to the IT office uh, on Jamini Road and Jamini Circle and from Ben's showroom at Anna Salai to Sarvana Bhavan restaurant Chennai. All these things are there in Kandukondan, Kondikondan. Chennai uh, of course, um, 
in this film is clean, neat and aesthetic and implements a bourgeois utopia, the dream of urban beauty and success in a post liberalized India. Shankar's Boys, uh, a 2003 movie is yet another example of how post liberalization Indian cinema symbolizes the aspirations of the so called generation X. Boys narrates the story of four young men in college and trace their ambitions, loves and relationships. Among other things, the film is remarkable for its understanding of the anatomy of Chennai, images of bustling Ranganathan street and Mylapur are juxtaposed with uh, more tony localities of Adyar and Spencer Plaza mall of Anasalai. So, um, where does all this lead to? We have to understand that India has changed considerably during the last two decades and this shift is reflected in the post liberalization Indian cinema. City in Indian cinema provides a platform for a special negotiation between people of different communities, groups and socio-economic backgrounds. The spate of films reflecting the city in its various manifestation is on the rise as we witness the images of a metropolis in films such as black and white corporate, chini kam, monsoon wedding, page 3, guru, delhi sex, dev d, yuva, a wednesday, um, vyom kesh bakshi and many more. So, a study of this genre is a, a particular relevant addition to the increasing interest in cultural and film studies. So, thank you very much. We will meet for our next class soon.